Welcome to the workshop on interim report time. I am going to talk about the analysis section of the interim report. This is a summary of the analysis section of the workshop that we had on the 22nd of March. So, let us see what sort of content should be there in this report section. This should include facts gathering techniques and description of current system using a diagram and an outline of existing similar solutions with references and some statements of requirements relevant diagrams for selected methodology. These are the sections that, that you should have in this chapter analysis chapter. So, let us go through these sections one by one. The first is the facts gathering technique. So, what, what are facts and why do we really need to gather facts? Facts are very important in order to understand your system that you are going to design. So, first of all you need to understand the existing system. In order to do that you have to gather the facts. Then you have to identify the requirements. You know, do that again you have to gather facts. So, what are the techniques? What sort of techniques you can use for gathering tech facts? Well, first one can be the field visits. The another one can be observations. So, you can go to the uh, clients area of clients uh, and then you can gather some information from there and observe what is going on and collect some information. You can distribute some questionnaires and with that also you can collect some facts. You can conduct some interviews also you can conduct some debriefings. This will help you to collect some facts and those will help you to understand the existing system. With that understanding draw a diagram and describe the processes in the current system. You can draw a top level diagram of a uh, top level use case diagram or a uh, zero level data flow diagram. It can uh, you can decide uh, which diagram you will select irrespective of uh, what methodology that you will select later on for your system development whether it can be structured or um, object oriented. Uh, but here you can select anything uh, irrespective of the methodology that you will select later. Uh, then you when you have a figure uh, when you draw the diagram using a figure um, remember to add the caption to it when in the report and refer the diagram in text further and describe the processes in the current system. You can have it like this. Uh, as shown here in the slide. You can have the example here my example shows you a top level use case diagram and here uh, uh, where you, ref you have a caption at the bottom of the figure and then in the text you have to describe the figure uh, by referring to the figure caption. The next point that we need to have in the analysis chapter is the outline of existing similar solutions with references. For that you have to study existing similar solutions. Then now you have uh, uh, by gathering facts you have identified some functionalities of the system that you wanted to design. So, with that understanding you can select some, fun uh, select some systems with similar functionalities. So, uh, you have to have at least two systems in your report. So, give names of uh, at least two systems and discuss their functionalities. Add references, add references so that we can see that you have really referred to them, you have visited the sites and you have uh, studied those systems and uh, it is better to have some screenshots as well if possible describe their functionalities that is very important. Next section in the analysis chapter is requirements. The requirements you can write in two categories functional requirements and non-functional requirements. Functional requirements are the uh, descriptions 
uh, that should describe what system, what uh, the system should do and uh, non-functional requirement should describe what the system, how the system work. Uh, the system functional requirements uh, normally the, the other behaviors, how the system behaves and then uh, you can talk about uh, how the system, what uh, inputs are there, outputs and uh, processors, then uh, data storage functions, those things you can talk here. When, in, we, when you talk about non-functional requirements, you have to talk about how the t system works. There you have to talk about uh, the qualities, the system attributes, specifically referring to uh, things like usability, interoperability, security. Um, then um, expandability, uh, th things like that, the quality or constraints, system constraints. When you are going to implement the system functionalities, what constraints will be there? Uh, those things you have to consider here when you are talking about the non-functional requirements. So, when you talk about functional requirements, the detailed descriptions of this will help you to provide a system design. Uh, then the uh, non-functional requirements help you to provide uh, detailed information to system architecture. For an example, I have taken an example from, uh, from the book uh, Soma Villes, uh, then they are uh, for software engineering book, uh, there they talk about a library system, uh, here they have a, uh, for the functional requirements they are, they are phrasing the statements like the user shall be able to search either all of the initial set of databases or select a subset from it. You can see uh, the user shall be able to search or select a subset. Now, there are actions that the user should be able to do. And the, then the next one is uh, the system shall provide appropriate viewers for the user to read documents in the document store. So, what the system, uh, how, how, what the system uh, do for the user. And next one, uh, it says every order shall be allocated a unique identifier which the user shall be able to copy to accounts person permanent storage area. So, likewise, uh, you have to consider what the system should do here when you are talking about the functional requirements. And when you are talking about non-functional requirements, you have to discuss how the system works. The example given by the Sommelier is like this uh, for the library system, the same system. The library system is named like uh, Lipsys. Then the, here it says the user interface for Lipsys shall be implemented in simple HTML without frames or Java applets. So, here the here it has a condition it says that you have to implement it, uh, shall system should be implemented uh, using uh, simple HTML without frames or Java applets. And the second one is says the system development process and deliverable documents shall conform to the process and deliverables defined in some standard. Now, again it says uh, referring to a standard how the system should be developed. So, the, the quality of the system is described here. And the next line says the system shall not disclose any personal information about customers apart from their name and reference number to the operators of the system. Again, there is a condition or restriction constraint provided by the system when the uh, uh, service is provided to the customer. Mm, the, now, uh, you can you have a I think you have a brief idea about uh, how to write non-functionalities and functional non-functional functional requirements. When students talk about methodology, they usually talk about system development methodology here, software development methodology. The use things like rapid application development, uh, 
um, and rational unified process, system development life cycle, waterfall method and things like that. Uh, so, they, what they do is they use a diagram and then they describe the process that they uh, methodology that they use to develop their project, their system. <coughs> but also here you can mention about the system analysis and design method that you, you select to design and develop your system that is uh, well, uh, uh, object oriented or structured that you can decide here in the analysis section. Now, you are right in the analysis section. So, you have to take a decision here because before going to the move into the design section, you have to take you, ha you have to inform the reader of the analysis section that uh, you how you have taken a decision that you, uh, what is your decision about uh, um, the system system analysis and design method. So, there you can select a method object oriented or, um, or structured and you can add relevant diagrams to describe your system. But at this stage you do not have a uh, detailed idea about what detailed information about the system. So, because uh, you have gathered some facts and based on that understanding you are designing this system uh, with that understanding you cannot you some maybe sometimes you will not be able to go for further uh, information detailed information in this stage of the analysis stage. In the design stage you can go for the detailed levels of the document, but here we need only top level diagram in the analysis section. So, what you can do is when you select object oriented select uh, draw a top level use case diagram. When you select an object oriented method, you have to draw a top level use case diagram. If you select structured method, then draw a zero level data flow diagram and a context diagram, zero level data flow diagram and a context diagram. So, those things needs to be drawn there and uh, that will help uh, the reader to understand understand uh, the functionalities, main functionalities of the system. So, those five points will be there in the uh, analysis chapter of the um, report and the same needs to be followed in the dissertation as well. So, if you go through this uh, from the beginning again, we, we discuss uh, the facts gathering techniques, the second the title is description of current system using a diagram. The third is outline of existing similar solutions with references. Fourth is the system requirements and the fifth one is relevant diagrams for selected methodology. So, these things will be considered when we are evaluating your dissertations as well. So, in because of that we need you to follow this instructions that we give like this and then write the interim report and also the follow the same instructions to write the dissertation. Thank you.